We welcome you into a beautiful Sunday afternoon in historic Riggs Field in Clemson, South Carolina. We've got some great ACC women's soccer action in store for you as the Tigers look to get over 500 in ACC play against the Boston College Eagles. Here you see the standings, just two matches to go across the board. Clemson now three points down of Virginia. The Cavaliers. Meanwhile, Clemson forced a nil-nil draw with Duke in the five seed. Boston College playing better. The Tigers need those three points today if they want to challenge for a spot in the six-team ACC championship. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us. Alongside Kevin Kennedy, I'm William Quagamus. Thanks for joining us today. Kevin, we saw Clemson play well, particularly defensively against Duke. Eddie Rawanski, very pleased. Boston College has played much better in the defensive third here in the month of October. We should have a good one in store today. Yeah, it was a really good performance against Duke. They were good defensively, pitching the shutout, getting the draw. Implications for the tournament for Clemson, Boston College could come in and play the spoiler today. BC has been very stingy of late, and that starts with their goalkeeper, Vibka Villabrand, has been awesome here lately. Yeah, last four games, she's only conceded three goals, helped her team to a 1-2-1 one, and one record. Still a young goalkeeper, just a sophomore, but a really good player. You see there the three shutouts and 61 saves among the league leaders in those categories. Somebody else who knows about clean sheets, how about Hallie Makowitz? We saw her make some fantastic plays defensively against Duke on Thursday. Yeah, really one save in particular, the one where she was able to get down quickly on the header from Cooper late in the game, right there preserving the shutout. Another good goalkeeper in this long history of great goalkeepers at Clemson. We'll see if both these goalkeepers can do what they've been doing here today. Kickoff, starting lineups up next. First day here in Clemson, 73 degrees, beautiful sunshine, and a gorgeous time to be celebrating Senior Day here at Historic Greeks Field. Let's look at how Jason Lowe's Eagles will align themselves. It's a defensive-oriented team. If they're going to score, it's going to be Sam Smith. Eight goals on the season, Kevin. Yeah, very dangerous. To me, looking at that, Clemson's going to be have to be very good in the flank areas to break this team down. You see, again, a lot of bodies in that defensive third. They will look to attack when they get opportunities. Eddie Rabwanski, they want to stay on the attack. They, they don't like getting shut out, but they were very, very good defensively. Caroline Conti, She's got to get the ball at her feet probably a little bit earlier than she did on Thursday. Yeah, for me, the more that you can get Renee Lyles, Caroline Conti, and Hal Hirschfeld involved in the game, the more success you're going to have. So those are going to be some key players for the Tigers today. Clemson wearing white tops and orange bottoms today. Again, it is senior day. A lot of upperclassmen getting honored pregame. A lot of family in the house. That's contributed to a fun atmosphere here at Historic Greeks Field today. Boston College in the all red, and this is a young roster. We can talk about that a little bit, particularly when they go to their bench. Nine freshmen, nine sophomores on the roster. Just about all the upperclassmen, though, that we see, particularly in the senior class, you're going to see in the starting lineup here today. Well, and you referenced it earlier. I think that's indicative of where the season is going for them. They're continuing to get better and better, more experience down the stretch, and grinding out a couple of results. There's a look at McKenna Morris, one of the juniors. She and her sister, Malia, both honored in uh, pregame today. Always fun to see that. Malia listed senior, McKenna the junior. And there were a number of Tigers honored as they went through a bit of a rough stretch, but this team appears to be finding out a little bit more about itself each and every time out, Kevin, and particularly on the defensive side. I think, again, Eddie Rawanski would have liked to see a goal, but you shut out a team with the firepower that Duke has. You're bringing some confidence in here as the Tigers get the ball on the opening kick. Yeah, and really that game came down to, to two moments, right? Morris had a good opportunity that the goalkeeper tipped over the bar, and then obviously the, the big-time save from Makowitz to preserve the shutouts. So either team could have stolen the points on that night. Seems trading possession. Again, Boston College, you can already see it's incredibly defensive oriented. They'll pressure a little bit on the edges. There you see a little bit of pressure right out high. That's Smith up front. Along with Claire Mincy. 
They want to be able to retreat, get in a strong defensive position, and then counter with Smith at the top when they get opportunities. And a foul called, our first of the game. It's whistled against Sonia Walk. Yeah, just a, a little late on the tackle there as Bruff was getting the ball away. Ball knocked out of bounds. And a throw for the Tigers. McKenna Morris. Smith couldn't keep it in. Clemson and Duke combined for just four shots in the first 45 minutes, and then the floodgates open up on Thursday. Meanwhile, Boston College got 13 shots against Miami. They fell 1-0, but they created a bunch of chances, put several on frame, and really, I think if you ask them, they think they probably should have won that match. Yeah, they were playing better down the stretch here, Qualk. Ball forward. Conti gets it to Lyles and then through and at the foot now with a keeper, Villabrant. Yeah, that driven ball from Bourne Camp was just a little under hit. She didn't quite strike that true. She played a number of those against Duke. Just to kind of drop it over the opposition's back line. In those situations, important for Clemson to pick up that second ball. In the midfield, Smith out in front of the pack with an offside call. That's the kind of opportunities Jason Lowe's going to be looking for. Year four at BC, very familiar with this league because of his time at Wake Forest and certainly Alabama. So nice coaching resume and trying to get this program back on solid footing. And again, he's got them playing with an identity here in their last four matches. Yeah, and we just got a little picture of why Sam Smith is dangerous. Just breaking that back line, running off the ball. Her run was just a little missed time there. Caught off sides. On the left side, that's Ava Omani. Able to get it into the middle, but the Tigers able to get possession now. Hal Hirschfeld beat to the spot. That doesn't happen very frequently. And now Ford, a ball over the top for Mincy. Harper White out there able to stop the progress. Clemson in retreat, doing a good job. Here's Smith, the captain, off the head and wide. There's Eddie Rabwanski, year 12 as a Clemson head coach. He's been a coach of the year. And this is a team that is destined for the NCAA tournament, even if they do fall short of uh, making that six-team ACC field. He's the all-time leader in program wins and looking to tack on a few more here down the stretch of the season. Yeah, he's done a tremendous job here. Just had this team in the Elite Eight a couple of years ago. This is a team I, I think he would tell you maybe it took a little bit longer for them to gel than maybe he thought it would. There's a nice ball through and an offside call as Morris thought she had the left foot strike. Yeah, not a bad idea from Renee Lyles. You could see Emily Bruff making that run out of midfield as well. That may have been the better option. Looks like a nice little passing seam developed. She looked to find Morris. Just a hair offside there. Nonetheless, you got a you got a good picture of Vildebrandt's save ability. Able to parry that away. Yeah, we talked about BC really having a hard time in the month of September. They had lost four in a row now, granted, all the top 16 teams, but they were outscored by a combined score of 15 nothing. And then the calendar turned, and so far they won one nil decision against Syracuse. They lost one nil at Louisville. They drew with Pitt, which is 
An important result for them, 1-1. One, one. And then lost 1-0 at Miami. So again, this is a team that's not surrendering a lot of goals and they're able to create a little bit of momentum for themselves that way, at least in playing a little bit better. Well, just a further testament to the quality of the ACC, regardless of where you are in the standings, anyone can beat you on any given day. Well, Liam Morris tried to play it into the middle and out it comes. Can Clemson keep it? Conti, no, she can't. Sophia Lowenberg able to come out of there with it. And Omani sends it to the back line of the Tigers. Nicely done from Megan Bornkamp there. Not allowing Sam Smith to turn in that space. Morris read that like a book. And here comes Clemson. Bruff in the midfield. Wide on the right, Maneric high and knocked away. What a chance there from Sydney Maneric to force the corner kick. And only she will know, but I think she was hoping to shape that as a cross, but the wind caught it, started carrying behind. Nice little save there from Pildebrand. Let's we'll see how they score this. They're gonna give her a shot. First save of the game. And you see there why we talked about her in our open, Kevin. A very, very talented player setting the tone for the Eagles. On the ground, here's Morris, left foot in, and Hirschfeld couldn't direct the header. And a throw is Emily Sapienza. Able to get it away off to the side. Yeah, Clemson electing to go short on that corner kick. I thought they would test her early, put a ball on top of her. See how courageous she is coming off of her line. Referee says the ball went off lane St. George, so BC with the throw in. I thought St. George had a good game against Duke. She was good in those 1v1 situations. Had some timely tackles. Well, Liam Morris plays it back. Left foot cross in and hit away by Omani. Hirschfeld back to White. Yeah, this Clemson back four really, I, I detected no weak spots on Thursday. There's Megan Bornkin, that's what she does. Plays the ball forward just out of the reach of Morris but particularly on the two edges where you had St. George and you had White on the outside. I thought they were superb. And then, of course, well, really, that was on the left side, on the right side with uh, Bourne Camp and with Hirschfeld playing back there. It just felt like Duke could find no room to get anything going, even with Cooper up front. And it was uh, defending by committee, right? They were doing such a good job of covering for one another. And another thing that stood out to me with both teams in that game the midfielders really tracked their runners and, and pitched in defending, which is so important if you want to be successful. There's a foul whistled against Clemson. Benaric draws the whistle. One thing I've noticed with Clemson, Kevin, love to get your thoughts on this. This is a physical team, particularly with players like Bourne Camp, who leads the ACC in yellow cards, by the way. Yeah, there's always a, an element of physicality you have to be prepared for, and they've got some young ladies on their team that are not afraid to get stuck in a tackle. A little bit behind Morris. Can she track it down and keep it in? She did just keep it in on the sideline. And now Malia going to work into the middle and taking away. Yeah, just trying to pick out Renee Lyles there. Well, they certainly seem to be pouncing on the loose balls quicker than BC at the moment. Dispossessed there by St. George, and there's Lyles. 
Looking for space to operate. Going to swing the ball to the side. McKenna Morris. Little give and go. Nice defending there. One of the captains, Agresti. And a foul against Hirschfeld. Well, you talked about the physicality and Hal Hirschfeld playing that role as the six. She's going to be a ball winner. She just went through Sam Smith a little bit there. Another look at it. That was a no doubter. One thing that is interesting, though, to note about the, the physical nature of play, and it stands out when you look at the stat sheet. Clemson's opponents have only been whistled for four yellow cards this year. That's a double digit discrepancy between the Tigers and their opponents. Ball played to the right. Maneric on the ground looking for a teammate. Saved by Villabrand. Big time save. Well, we talked we talked just a few minutes ago about Clemson getting their key players involved. Conti doing a good job of running with the ball and then finding Maneric. And then look at Lyle sneaking in. That's worth two looks. It's a good decision from Renee Lyles. You're going to have to hit that one time in that moment. That's two quality saves already for Vildebrand on the day. There's Hallie Makowitz. Oh, nice ball off the head. This is Morris with a head of steam. Can she get a chance? She does. It goes past the keeper, and the Tigers are on the board. Well, we'll have to see if Makowitz will get credited with the assist as well, but that came directly from her, and a nice little flick on from Conti, and just the pace of Morris in an open field. Superb execution by Clemson. In just a moment, this game went from tied to a Clemson lead. This is how it happened. Terrific first touch from her to seal the defender, gets in behind her. Hildebrand nearly came up with the save on that as well. Goal number three of the season for Malia Morris, honored on senior day. Well, Clemson certainly needs to, to win today to have any hope of making that top six and qualify for the ACC tournament. That's the start they needed. Shot wide. BC trying to answer clear Mincy. And it was McKenna Morris who tried to clear it and lost her footing just a little bit trying to get it away. Yeah, Mincy knew exactly what she wanted to do when she got on the ball there. Here you see Makowitz. Away into the midfield and BC will have it, but only for a moment. This is Morris on the right side, and she will force a throw. Hirschfeld gives it up out wide. This is White. Excuse me, that's St. George. Now a foot race. And it'll be the Eagles with it. Laura Govin. BC will throw now. Eagles looking to find an equalizer here. This is not the type of game that the Eagles wanted to play. They've had a hard time cracking the code offensively, even as they've 
gotten a one, two, and one record. Much better form here in the month of October. Still very difficult for them to score goals. Well, it's a team, as you, as you mentioned earlier, at my, Miami can go down there and generate a lot of opportunities. Just 19 goals on the season for BC in 16 games. They've scored just two since September the 11th. Here's Lyles. Pushing the top of the box. That's deflected. Sarai Costello kept Lyles from testing the keeper. And that's scrappy defending there from Caroline Conti to stop the corner attack. This will be a Clemson throw in. Students coming out, enjoying a beautiful day. As we said before, just a picture perfect scene here. And a foul whistled against Clemson. It's been a little cold snap this week, so it's uh, the weekend's Turned out to be pretty nice. Yeah, beautiful weather for the football game yesterday. And it was a little chilly on Thursday night. You see the fouls, Clemson three, Boston College one. Always interested to see how teams will settle in when something like senior day is a factor. You got a bunch of players on this Clemson team who were honored before the game. A lot of family here that doesn't often get to make trips like this. And the Tigers not showing any signs of sort of wonky emotional approach to the game. Sometimes you can get a little bit too high. Feels like a calm and composed team on a mission so far in the first 17 plus minutes and right there St. George dispossesses the eagle and here we go. Well talking to coach Radwanski and his staff they they certainly feel like they would like to get a couple of these games back. Morris finds the head of her sister. Beg your pardon. Conti stealing. That is all oh my bus. word. Good delivery here. Couldn't quite turn it on frame. Conti, she snuck in. Yeah, she did. An aggressive run to that near post. Well, talking to Coach Radwanski, they, they felt like they've played well and just been unfortunate. Some key moments in games. Let's not forget this is a team that went on the road and beat a highly ranked West Virginia team. They knocked off Notre Dame. Conti, big right foot and save by Villabrand. That had pace and a little movement on it. Villabrand did well to hold that. It's a big strike by Conti, about 25 yards out. Let's see the movement on that. Looking to find Smith and an offside call. Clemson's forced a couple of those with a high line. Executing well defensively to keep Smith from getting in behind him. Yeah, it's intelligent communication back there. They recognize when to step. Just put her in an offside position, snuff out that attack. Just about 20 minutes in. We've got our first substitution, Sammy Meredith in. Emily Bruff will take a seat for the moment. And this is a nice little wrinkle that, that Clemson has in their toolbox. When they make that change, they're just going to drop Renee Lyles back into midfield, put Sammy Meredith as the center forward, 
And I think sometimes Renee is almost better in those moments where she can pick up the ball and run at players. Meredith gives you some more size there on the front line as well. Yeah, she's very good with her back to goal. Six foot senior out of Wando High School. 15 games, eight starts on the season, and she's got a goal to her credit. She and Bourne Camp, the preferred targets on set pieces. Can Conti run it down? She cannot. Eagles throw in. Clemson already has scratched with a goal. In the 13th minute, Malia Morris the goal and credited with the assists. Officially Conti and Hallie Makowitz. Yeah, I think that's the right call from the statistician. That was a Morris to Morris connection and couldn't quite find it. We've seen that more than once this year that McKenna comes back from the back line or comes up from the from the back line to the front and makes some runs and she and her sister obviously it's in the genes. <laughs> they have a great connection with one another. Well, most every other coach, when they when they talk about this Clemson team, they highlight some players and they lump them in together and, and say, and, and the Morris sisters, you have to watch the Morris sisters. <laughs> McKenna has it taken away. In the midfield, walk. Ball in the middle. Sapienza fights for it. BC having a hard time turning the ball when they get it into the midfield. Clemson in good position. There's St. George on the sideline. That'll be a throw as Sapienza forced a tough angle. Yeah. And now BC with some reinforcements. They just have to be quicker in those transitional minutes, those moments of the game. And if you allow Clemson to get organized, they're going to be tougher to break down. Riley Kerber, Sydney Sagala, and Andy Barth coming in. And this is what we were talking about. This is a somewhat veteran starting lineup. There's a left foot shot saved by Makowitz. Riley, Seagal, and Barth, all young players. Riley Kerber, a freshman, and Seagal, a freshman. Barth, a sophomore. That shot was by Smith, by the way, covered up by Makowitz. Well, that's nicely done from Lowenberg. It's a good ball. Not quite handled. On the far side, that was Barth. They were trying to get involved in the act. Barth has a pair of goals on the season. She's someone who has given them nice deft touch around the goal coming off the bench. Omani see if BC can keep possession for a little while ball forward looking for Smith Makowitz good instincts there to come out yeah she read that well I thought she was actually going to be late to the party but able to cut that out good awareness Morris up the field, and Lyles. There's a defender going down. Can Renee capitalize with the left? Off the top, rebound, and a goal for the Tigers. 
That's Meredith, another senior on senior day. As she pounced on the rebound, she was quickest to it. I think BC will feel a little hard done by. There was some contact, but it was incidental as Lyles was getting in behind. Look at this. Really, I would say Lyles deserves a goal there. That was super. That yeah, just looked like it was destined for that top corner. Just a little high comes off the crossbar. Meredith just does get there before the defender. Watch this. This was close. Meredith's got to get that foot there. Yeah, and that's a, a striker's instinct is to immediately frame the goal. As soon as the shot is taken, you're looking for, for anything that bounces out. Hey, Qualk, they all count for one, right? That's right. And I got to say, well done by our camera crew. What do we have, like nine views of that? My word. Excellent work, including the goal cam, which is it's really my personal favorite. Well, appreciate Otto for doing a good job on that. Well, depending on what happens with Pitt as these games are going on, this could set up a really intriguing last match for Clemson down the stretch. Indeed, the Tigers will head up to Pittsburgh on Thursday, and we showed you the ACC standings. We'll look at them again later on, but at, there it is, Thursday, 7 o'clock. You can see it right here on ACC Network Extra, but if things go a certain way, Clemson gets three points there. All of a sudden, they start vaulting some teams, including Pittsburgh, and not only are they in the top six, but they may be in the five or four position. Ooh. That was a very close chance there. And Boston College threatening now for the first time. Looked like. Couldn't tell if that was Lowenberg or Agresti getting on the end of this. Nice header. That was Lowenberg who got to it. That's Emma Winner, by the way, in for Clemson. Left foot. Into the middle, pinballed around and cleared a bit. High and wide there from Govin. Well, that's a timely save from Makowitz. It's so easy to, to lose your sharpness after you score a goal, a key moment in a match. See a lot of goals conceded in those situations. She was up to the challenge. BC with four shots, including two on frame already. Really testing Makowitz. That's what we talked about. This team is at the bottom of the table. And I give them a lot of credit because you got a week left a lot of times. If you're sitting at the bottom of the table in a competitive conference, especially the way things started going for them at the end of September, you wonder if some of the veterans start thinking about their next career move. You start seeing some players check out. And that is not at all what we've seen. No, it could be easy to mail it in, but they've remained competitive. Morris plays it back. White off the deflection. Clemson will throw. And it'll be McKenna Morris to trigger it in. Renee Lyles. It's a good first touch from Renee. Hirschfeld gets it to Conti. She plays it wide. This is Malia Morris. On the right. Deflected. Kerber had it for a moment. The Tigers with a couple of chances. Just couldn't quite connect. And now an opportunity to counter as it's sent away by Villabrand. Well done from Villabrant, though. Kept her eye on the ball. Collected that comfortably. You could see Sammy Meredith sneaking in at the near post. Morris to Morris. And there goes McKenna. 
Running forward with her sister. Gets it back. Left foot. Shot gobbled up by Villebrand. Smith just didn't quite get all of that. Bourne camp. Sends it well forward. Some back and forth right now. Harper White came charging in, and now Hirschfeld's on the back line. They attack, but Bourne camp able to take that pass. That was a dangerous ball there. If it gets by, BC's got a couple options. Throw in now for BC. 13 shots combined for these two teams, seven on frame thus far. It's a little different than Thursday night's match, right? We saw four in the entire first half combined. Both teams going to have well beyond that number. Here's Conti. Lane St. George. Going to let Makowitz collect everybody, get them organized. And there again, they'll play through their goalkeeper, the junior from Colorado, brimming with confidence. That's Ooh, the pass. Recent run of good play. That's the pass Bourne Camp was looking for. She's having a little trouble finding her midfielders building out of the back. She just needs to have Conti and Lyles find those passing seams early. White. Gets it back, and she'll get it wide. Malia Morris. Omani's all over Morris. She's trying to get it back into the middle. Instead, they'll have to pass it there. Hirschfeld. Little too heavy there from Conti out of the midfield. Malia Morris off the deflection. Conti tracks it down. Tigers have had an awful lot of possession here in the first half. Yeah, they really have. And, and as we mentioned earlier, they seem to be quickest to bounce on the, the second balls. Renee Lyles that's taken down. It. Oh, my. And that's out for a goal kick. Oh, boy, aggressive. And the crowd here wanted... A foul in the box. We'll have to get another look at that, but I thought surely that was going to be a penalty. Sarai Costello dangerous there. I don't know. It, I don't know if she gets the ball there, Qualk. You know, on the, the camera angle from behind, it looked clean to me. And then we see that view from the side. It looks like a foul. There's really a break for Boston College, in my view. Well, Carmen Serbia was <laughs> decisive right away. He knew exactly the call he was going to make. And again, the call is coming. It always is nice to note the perspective of the referee because we don't have the opportunity, or they don't have the opportunity, to see all things from all perspectives like we do. Well, he was looking at that play like we would have from behind where it looked a little bit cleaner. Yeah, looked like she, she made contact with the ball, clearly went out. Conti. Plays it wide. Morris can't keep it in. There's almost too many cameras, right? Because then you see a still frame of something. It's, it's tough to see in real time. No such thing, sir. More cameras are good. <laughs> but you're right. It gives you 
and an accurate view of how the play would have been viewed in real time by the officials making the call. That's a fair point. Yep. You know, it does make you wonder if the scoreboard reads something different. Here's Morris. Tries to turn it, goes down. We lost her footing a little bit. But if it's not a 2-0 game in the first half, you wonder if Clemson maybe gets a little more benefit of the doubt there. Context matters. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I've always thought about that, and I've always thought about like, well, they they can't you can't make that call in the in the first minute. Well, if if it's a penalty, it's a penalty. It doesn't matter if it's the first or the 89th. What do they what do they say? Uh, the best officials are when you don't notice them at all. That's right. So the game just kind of plays out. And you know, I I agree with that philosophy, except. I'll hold that thought because Lyles has got an opportunity here. Ball low and into the middle and sent away. And I will say this, in that, in that instance, Quark, I think the body language from the players, they recognize that it wasn't a penalty as well. They weren't, they weren't gesturing and, and upset that the foul, a little bit from the crowd, but the players on the field play on next play. It makes a lot of sense. Hirsch fell. Maybe a miss hit there. Malia Morris looking for a helper. Has it with Lyles. Lyles turns it back to Morris. She's got a chance. Offside the call. Just a bit tardy on the delivery. Nonetheless, how about the save again from Villebrand? Point blank. Another look. Boy, she tried to hang on. Yeah, clever little ball slipped through from Lyles, though. Both teams with two offsides so far. You know, going back to the point about being a referee, there are always going to be calls in any game where there is a controversial moment. And I feel like some of those are unavoidable for officials. Sure. That's going to be cleared away and a throw in for the Tigers. But I think generally you're right. The best officials call what's there, and you don't really notice them. Yeah, the, the objective things like did the ball cross the, the plane of out of bounds, that's an objective call. Subjective was it, was it shoulder to shoulder? Was it shoulder to back on the challenge? A lot open to interpretation. A couple of subs in for Clemson, Cassidy Lindley. Checks into the lineup. Debbie Dudley also another senior being recognized today. Lindley Ooh. also in the senior class. And that one a dangerous opportunity. I thought that was going to be relatively harmless, but able to test the keeper yet again. It didn't look like much, but it just kept drifting towards that top corner. Tigers with two early goals here today. To win their home regular season finale, Hirschfeld got some numbers now. Ball high and wide. I think that was him a winner just cutting inside, putting it on a right foot. Clemson with a decided advantage in shots, 11-4. You go to shots on goal, the Tigers with six. The Eagles with two. That means four saves already for Villebrandt. She really has done a super job here today. Tigers have put the ball in perfect position a number of times. 
Even ones that she saved. She's taking a valiant effort. BC again having just a hard time holding possession right now, Kevin. When they've had opportunities to play from the back and get it forward, Clemson's been able to dispossess and then attack on their own. Yeah, they've pounced on uh, anything in midfield, Bourne Camp in particular, anything that comes to that BC front line. She's quick to step. She's not allowing forwards to turn. This is Omani. And this is one of those moments where Thumps is able to get organized defensively. They're tough to beat. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Kenna Thomas tried to get to the edge, and it just was not happening. Well, she was matched up with Cassidy Lindley, and she did a good job defending, but she had also good cover there. Lindley fired up about that and should be. Conti from Meredith. Gets it ahead. That's a good ball. Just a bit late getting there. Debbie Dudley, heck of a job starting something there on the left wing. And once again, Villabrant comes up big. Yeah, Clemson did everything right. The weight of the pass from Dudley was outstanding. Winner's quick. She was able to get there. But Villabrant, much like Makowitz, very aware coming off of her line. Conti by herself. Weave it through traffic with the right. Couldn't get it on frame. She's upset with herself there. Personally, I don't mind it. A player of her stature, you want her to be the aggressor in a situation like that. I think you've seen real growth in her game over the, in the course of the last year. She is confident shooting from distance. She already tested Villebrandt once from distance. On the side again, it was Thomas locked up with a Tiger, and again, it'll be a Clemson throw in. Nice defending there by Lindley once more. It's well done from Conti. Harper White. Born Camp ideally would like to get it forward, but BC obviously aware of that. Warncamp so good at getting the ball to the front line when she has opportunity. It's a tough one with BC. With those five midfielders in there. Warncamp and Harper White are having a tough time finding Conti, breaking that line of pressure. This is where they need to look for, look for Dudley, look for Conti. That's a good ball from Harper White, though. St. George through and kicked away. BC on defense with Govin. Ella Hooser going to come on for Clemson and give Conti a breather. She gets a nice hand from the crowd, and rightfully so. Excellent half of performance for the veteran native of the upstate. St. George to Meredith. Now Hirschfeld. High and wide for Morris. This is McKenna, splits the pair into the box. And again, sent away, but Hurst felt the follow. What a clever little piece of dribbling from Morris there. Cuts right between the two defenders. Hurst felt a big swing at that. Yeah, I think she had time. She elected to hit that one time rather than settle it.
Less than a minute to go. Here before halftime. Don't go anywhere. We'll get you caught up on what you might have missed in the first half. Highlights. Well, Clemson will be happy with this start. This is what they were looking for on senior day. No question about it. Hooser to Hirschfeld. Do the Tigers attack one more time? Lindley. Meredith gives it back, and they won't now. That's going to do it, Quok. And the clock hits zero in the first half. Hard to be upset about much if you're Eddie Rowanski. 45 minutes of solid play from his Clemson team here on senior day. As you said, Kevin, a really good start. The Tigers got to love where they are. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is for them moving forward, they've got to do a better job of their midfielders, find those passing seams so they can build out of the back. Once they've gotten out of the back, they've created chances, gotten forward, I think, on the flip side. For BC, they have to be quicker in those transitional moments. You've seen Sam Smith can be dangerous, but they've got to break quicker, not allow Clemson to get organized defensively. Two goals from Clemson. Two seniors responsible for those, and we had a lot of good senior day moments before the first half. We'll break down that first half here from Clemson coming up next. Your post. Just an elite day to bring the family out to historic Griggs Field. Love it. Have the kids out here and watching some good college soccer. 45 minutes in the books before our next 45. How about a look at our goals, Kevin? This is the first one in the 13th. Look at Hallie Makowitz start this thing, and then it's Conti with the flip, and then it was Malia Morris who did the rest. Yeah, so many little bits and pieces of that were quality. The flick on, but the first touch from Malia Morris and then the finish. See Morris sneaking it right through the five hole. The keeper there and the Tigers were up one, but they were not done. 25th minute, the Tigers strike again. Renee Lyles after a little bit of incidental contact here. She gets things started for the Tigers on the attack. Yeah, puts this on her left foot. Look at the shock walk. Rings off the crossbar. Meredith is the first to respond. You feel bad for Lyles right there. I mean, she put it right on target, exactly what you want, but Meredith, the cleanup crew, look how close this is. Yep, of course, the whole ball needs to cross the plane of the line. It did not. And that brings us to a 2-0 Clemson lead. A look at the stat sheet tells you everything you need to know. Uh, the saves, four saves. Let me tell you something. If Villabrand wasn't fantastic, this game could be way out of hand. BC, though, uh, within striking distance here, if they can get a quick goal. Been a cleanly played game. A lot of up and down. Not as much physical play as we've seen at times. Yeah, as I said, if they can be quicker in those transitional moments, they can carve out a couple of chances. Eddie Rowanski's Tigers, we're talking 12 years now, only three losses when leading at the half. That is a phenomenal stat. Very disciplined team. They understand what it takes to grind out the result. I think the next goal is obviously very important. If BC is able to nick one here, this game is very much alive. Clemson could put it to bed if they score in the first 15 minutes. And that stat also tells me, too, you know, there's it's one thing to be good tactically at the start of a game, but sometimes managing game time situation, the various moments you find yourself in, some coaches are better at that than others, and Eddie Rabwanski certainly is one of those. Here's Hal Hirschfeld, not content with two, and ball flicked to the middle, and yet sent away by the Eagles. But that tells me Eddie Rabwanski knows when it's time to ease off the gas, let the time on the clock work in your favor. He's not overly aggressive in trying to build a lead so that he surrenders a goal. Well, and the other night I think was a perfect example. The last seven or eight minutes of that game when it, when it really started to get stretched with Duke and it was end-to-end -end action, I think there was a piece of them that said, you know what, a point from this game isn't too bad. They bring on McKenzie Duff as an additional defender. Let's just see this thing out. And that, at the end of the day, could be a very, very valuable point down the stretch. Getting a start in the second half. Debbie Dudley 
And that ball forward from Morris could not find Conti and a goal kick. Eddie Verwanski making sure he gets those seniors in today. A lot of seniors honored on senior day this afternoon. And again, as we said, a really nice crowd has shown up. A lot of family and friends in the stands. A lot of students and community members, though, too, that have come to see these seniors off. And it has been a highly decorated senior class. It's done a lot of great things for this Clemson program. You know, with the COVID year still kind of in effect, I think we'll see a number of these players with, with eligibility remaining. We'll see them back here next fall. Seen a few of those players post some thank yous on the Clemson women's soccer Twitter page this week. Hallie Makowitz able to get to that and gobble it up. I think that was Sam Smith threatening again. Tigers have made Smith really forced her to attack outside the box. The deflection, but an offside call. McKenna Morris tried to sneak out there. That was very close. Really, if that had not been whistled, I would not have questioned it. We mentioned early on, too, this Boston College team, you could, you could tell this year's about growth. Year four of the regime for Jason Lowe and his staff. But they've got nine freshmen and nine sophomores. And so the handful of upperclassmen that they've got, they've leaned on, but they've also tried to prioritize the development of a lot of these younger players. We saw some come off the bench. A few were in the starting lineup today. Well, looking at, looking at some of the results on the year clock, I mean, they've beat Syracuse. Syracuse has taken a lot of points off of teams this year. And then drawing with number 21, Pitt, those are impressive results. Just seem to string those together more consistently. You know, if it weren't for the standings, you told Eddie Rewanski, hey, you can draw off Pitt. You'd say that's a really positive result. That's a tough place to go play and win. Yeah, absolutely. Randy Waldrum, of course, there won a national championship from his days at Notre Dame. He has turned the Pitt program around. This is Lowenberg. Plays it back. Lowenberg gave some good minutes off the bench to Boston College. Or she was in the starting lineup, excuse me. She gave good minutes is the point. Yes, she did in the first half. Jessica Carlton getting a start in the second half. Ball goes forward. It's Govin. Best chance in a while for BC, and the cross is gathered. That was a good run. She just didn't have anyone get into that near post. She's on. Good run by Conti. That was good anticipation, good instincts by Villebrandt. You get a sense of how far off her line she's playing. Able to cut that out. In the middle, a lot of space to operate. Nice defending there by Michelle Agresti. She may have saved a goal right there because Clemson had bodies forward on the attack. Yes, yeah, Sammy Meredith was in behind if she doesn't cut that pass out. Born camp. Looking to see if she can send one forward. But as you said, a lot of traffic there in the midfield of Boston College defensively. Well, you could see all the body language. She was looking to go long, but look at how far Villabrand is playing off of her line. She's just squeezed that space behind that beat. She can... tried anyway. Yep. If she stays on her line, that ball is on for Clemson. Here's Hirschfeld. Morris. 
Conti. Now to St. George. And it's Harper White. Back to Conti. Conti wants to have a go. Instead, she'll give it off to the wing. Minerick has it stolen away, and that's a foul. That's Sam Smith doing what she does best. And just a little too handsy from Minerick there. Costello. Christy tried to go through. Conti to Meredith. Back to Hirschfeld. High ball and an opportunity. Oh, deflected and Morris. He's actually calling her for a foul. Yep, they're going to call her foul. Maybe was her contact there when she tried to flick that ball against Villebrandt? Tough to tell from our angle. It's a little tough to tell. Let's try this angle. Uh, just a little, little kick out there at the end, making sure Villebrandt has it. Just trying to double check. <laughs> this is Dudley. Splits the difference and gets it back. Dudley. Yeah, well done from Debbie Dudley to, to win that ball back. Bringing lots of energy off the bench for Clemson today. Senior from American Fork, Utah. Minerick working well with McKenna Morris here. Morris, oh, she tried to go over the top, and that is a handball. She saw Hirschfeld there and just could not avoid Minerick. Yeah, Hirschfeld making that really good run out of midfield. Minerick tried to get out of the way. Eight fouls for Clemson, just two for BC in the game. This is Morris. Malia has it knocked away, and this will be a goal kick for the Tigers. Good defending by Costello to keep that from being yeah, quite like, a bit more dangerous. Like she was going to be off to the races. Costello reacted, able to get there, put a challenge in. You know, it's interesting watching this Clemson team from Thursday night to today, Quark. Usually they like to press high and, and really force teams to break them down, but they've had a little more reserved approach. Probably some of that is second game in a few days time. That was a pretty emotional game. Took a lot of them out of them mentally and physically. Corner. Far side. Headed away. Once again, Agresti gets a head on it and she can't keep it in. You saw Bourne Camp just hunting at that back post. McKenna Morris will throw in for Clemson. I feel like the Tigers are looking for the knockout blow here. Another corner. Yeah, they can be so dangerous on these sets between Hirschfeld, Camp, and Sammy Meredith. They have some real threats. Maria Manusos. Looking to check in at the next opportunity. Freshman. This ball high and far. Headed once, twice, and away. And another corner kick. And Bornkamp's going to take it this time. 
as Manusos is going to come in. Looks like Sydney Manerik is coming off. Nice job by Manerik today. Looked like it was going to be Born Camp, and instead she trades places with McKenna Morris, who will trigger it in from the corner. They've tried to go far post twice. This time they go short. Ball forward. Meredith was onside and shot deflected. Hirschfeld battling for it. Conti blocked again. That is good collective defending from Boston College. Hirschfeld whistle for the foul. Boy, well earned possession there for the Eagles. A flurry of activity. Clemson able to generate two shots, but they were blocked before Vildebrand had to do any work. Fifteen shots now for the Tigers. No connection there. St. George has it. Meredith. That's so good at what she does. Pinning the ball, bringing other teammates into the game. I feel like Mar Maria Manusis is going to give Clemson a little spark on this left side. She's trying to sneak back there. You can even see a top of your screen there on the right. She gets the ball at her left foot. Ready to go. Now forward to St. George. Low cross. This ends up back in Clemson's possession with Dudley. Hirschfeld across. This is McKenna Morris. Right foot low, deflected, goal! Sammy Meredith again finds a deflection. I think we're gonna see a double assist there as well. Looked like Conti got to the cross, had the last touch before Meredith put it away. That's outstanding 1v1 work there from Malia Morris. She sizes up the defender, has a go at her, drives to the inline. Look at the delivery. Actually, I don't think Conti got a piece of that. Morris drives it. Now it looked like it just hopped over. A deflected by the defender there, right to Meredith. Yeah, it put off Vildebrand, didn't it? Vildebrand had a beat on it. It's unfortunate for her, but Sammy Meredith getting the brace on senior day. How about that? What a time to do it. Just one goal all season coming in for Meredith. She's got two this afternoon. Special for her, native of Charleston. Transfer back into the program. Now ball forward. This is Conti. Can Meredith make it a hat trick? Not this time. She's at the moment in the game now, whenever a sub goes to the line, she's thinking, not me, not me. <laughs> Keep me on. Mackenzie Duff into the game right now for Clemson as well. Again, as Clemson goes, we've mentioned, going a little bit more defensive, a little more conservative in approach. Manuso's tried to make something happen there, but couldn't do it in time. Foul called and a chance for Villabrant to send it forward. And a foul whistled there against Claire Mincy. And just a little, little bit with the hand. She, a little push on Hirschfeld, get an advantage on winning the header. It was Morris again. They tried to find, and it just grazed the back of Malia's jersey. Yeah, Thomas winning the header there. 
Manusos goes down. Some contact, no call. Tigers win possession. Here's Dudley. Devi turns it. Now back to Manusos. Left foot. High into the air and out the back. This will be another corner kick opportunity for Clemson. Well, that was a little spark I was talking about with Manusa. She just has a tendency to do that. She comes in, makes an impact. Energy level gets bumped up. Emma Winner coming in to get Meredith. There's your moment right there. Well, of course, in college soccer, they get one re-entry, so I'm sure she'll position herself on the bench close to, close to Coach Redwanski. If you're thinking about putting anyone else in, I'm right here. And who would blame her? That's right. Renee Lyle's also in for Conti. Both those players deserve a nice hand and got one from the partisans here at Historic Creeks Field. Ball into the middle. Look, like it found green space. Almost a little bit of you take it, you take it. Looked like Hirschfeld maybe thought the ball was a bit over her head. Here's a look at what else is going on around the ACC today. North Carolina, you see, with a big lead at Miami. Florida State, Pittsburgh, one we're monitoring for Clemson implications. The team immediately ahead of Clemson in the standings, Virginia, with a 2-0 lead in the first half against NC State. So that looks likely to be three more points for the Cavaliers. But again, still lots of time to jockey for position because, you know, Clemson sitting in seventh right now. There are three teams they can't catch, but they can get as high as fourth. Here's Manusos with the left and the chip wide to the right by Winner. Yeah, it looked like that took a little deflection right before it got to Winner's foot. Put her off. Yeah, Kwok, look at those scores as well. I mean, Virginia Tech is still lurking right behind Clemson in the standings. Just wide. You're trying to keep Virginia Tech at bay because, like you say, they could sneak up and get one of those top six as well. Clemson throw in coming. Like the aggression from Sydney Sagala pushing Bourne Camp. Tigers get it forward, a deflection. Right to the right foot of Lyles. Manusos keeps it in Clemson's grasp. Lyles. Back to the top. Hirschfeld with the right. Blocked again. Good block from BC. I believe that was Sapienza. Agresti, beg your pardon, it was Agresti that had the block. What a terrific little turn from Manuzos, freeing herself there. Looked like she was in jail on the sideline. This is Harper White. With the right, heck of a cross there. Villabrand deals well with it. Yeah, I like the change from Coach Radwanski when he brings on Mackenzie Duff. He just pushed Harper White into midfield. She saw so much time there last year. Hal Hirschfeld. Again, she wants one. Desperately keeps it at her foot and just a little deflection stops the progress for a moment. Malia Morris across and grabbed by Villabrand. We just have the feeling that anything that comes across that goal mouth, Villabrand will just snatch. It's very good in the air. She snagged a couple of those crosses already. Villabrand, six foot sophomore from Lipstadt. 
Germany. Offside whistled against Smith. One more time, the standings, and we focus a lot on that first column. If you look at the second column, though, Wake Forest, Louisville, both with an opportunity to catch Clemson should things go awry. Now, of course, the way the scoreboard stands now, Clemson would have 14 points, and so at least for the moment, you're able to keep everybody behind you at bay, and then you start setting your sights on Duke, who's in a tough battle, Pitt's in a tough battle right now. Those are teams that you also could catch. Well, like we said, if if Florida State is somehow able to, to beat Pitt today. Oh, here's Lyles. Uh, Beautiful ball from Anusos. Lyles turns it. Right foot wide to the right. Just didn't quite get her hips around in the end of the day. She has been active, though, hasn't she? Well, your prognostications come true about Manuso. She set that up, and then Lyles just not quite an opportunity here. She had to turn it. Almost like she lost her bearings a bit as she was spinning around. And I think if she would have taken that with her left, Thomas was closing so quickly, I think she would have blocked that. Hal Hirschfeld out. Ella Hoser checks in, and McKenna Morris back in for Lane St. George. Well, Kalk, before that last sequence of attack, we said if somehow Florida State, oh, they're in again. There's Morris. Cross. And dealt away. Boy, Clemson not taking anything off the gas pedal right now. Up two goals. Yeah, Three board. goals, beg your pardon. But if, if Pitt were to drop points today, sets up a pivotal game for Clemson to go up to Pittsburgh next week and really control their destiny in terms of getting into the tournament. If they can grind a result and beat Pitt, they're in. Offside called against the Tigers, and there you see. You catch that right here on ACC Network Extra Thursday at 7 o'clock. By the end of today, it'll be really simple what has to happen for a lot of these teams to get in. And what has to happen for a lot of these teams to be out. And really, for a team like Clemson, even though you're behind, you feel like because of what's ahead for some of the teams in front of you, I think they knew that if they were able to get six points this week, that that ought to be good enough. Now, again, that's easier said than done, and you don't know what's going to happen around you. You don't necessarily control your own destiny. But Eddie Rawanski, I think if you asked him, he would tell you that if his team has a good week, I think he'd be shocked if they're not in the top six. Absolutely. Riley Kerber, freshman out. Ragna Magnus' daughter into the lineup for the Eagles. Freshman from Iceland. Well, you just really get the feeling that Renee Lyles desperately wants a goal today. Morris to Manusos. Couldn't quite do anything with that. Yeah, you can feel it. She was so close on the shot that came off the crossbar that Sammy Meredith ultimately put away. Lowenberg couldn't track it down. It's almost like for Lyle, she's been so close a couple of times. Now you'd almost, it'd be better if you weren't close at all. <laughs> Manuso's tried to flick it around the defender, did not work. Magnus' daughter. Hoser to winner. Stolen away, and now an opportunity forward. The Eagles, can they get on the board? Just wide. Sydney Sagala, dangerous attack. Really the best chance BC's had all day. Yeah, they just kind of ripped open that Clemson defense, didn't they? Well, she didn't make contact, but you have to give Mackenzie Duff a lot of credit. Just her presence alone coming over and applying pressure in that situation. Just put the shooter off a little bit. Makowitz doing all the things, making herself as big as possible. 
Lots of subs here for Clemson. Tigers look to make some changes. McKenna Morris. There's a score update. Florida State, a 1-0 lead on Pittsburgh. So if you're Clemson, that's exactly what you needed to make. That's in the 68th minute, so it's uh, a few minutes behind our game. But that makes the Clemson Pitt game a win and end scenario. And if you're Pitt, really, you're at least looking for a draw in that instance because a draw is your best friend other than, of course, a win on your own to get three points. Right. Substitutions for Clemson, by the way. Cassidy Lindley, Casey Smeckrud, Emily Bruff all into the lineup. Dudley is out. Malia Morris out as well. Look like Harper White just lost her footing there. Yep. Manuso is also out of the lineup for Clemson. Andy Barth saw her off the bench in the first half. Sam Smith is out. Nice little right foot there by Bruff. She's going to get it back. Almost found Lindley, and now up the field again. The freshman by herself now. This is Sagala. Tigers in retreat. Shot save. Hallie Makowitz. Not only is the save impressive, but Quark, the fact that she held that with zero hesitation, doesn't give up a rebound. Nice and firm. That was a really nice shot there by Sagala. Second straight time. Yeah, that looked like it was on a rope to that top far corner. Wait. Born camp. Get the feeling just a little bit. Clemson is hunting for that fourth goal. Everyone wants to join the party here. Bruff to Lindley goes cross. Tigers missed. Is that Casey Smackrod coming in at the back post? Yes, it was. A 5'11 senior transfer from College of Charleston. That's a terrific ball from Cassidy Lindley, though. Shaped away from the goalkeeper. Just couldn't quite get her hips around it to put it on frame. Smackrod's going to, she's going to want that one back. Another one, another one of these seniors honored today. Clemson's out shot, Boston College 21 to seven now. Only seven of those on frame, but really more so than the number of shots or even shots on goal. It's the number of chances that the Tigers have had that have put Boston College on the extreme defensive. Right there, Bruff takes the ball away from Lowenberg. One thing I'm always impressed with with Clemson is how their defenders and midfielders are able to use their positioning to win one-on-ones. Yeah, very intelligent positioning. Flick off the head and again a save. Boston College is creating quite a few opportunities here the last few minutes. Some of that could just do with the fact that the quality of the, the players is good on the field, obviously, but when you make so many substitutions, you, you lose a little bit of chemistry. I wouldn't say they appear rattled right now, but not in sync. But credit to BC, they are still hunting, looking for that first goal. And you do feel like BC had a hard time as we see another sub. Emma Badger, a freshman, coming in for the Eagles now. And she will replace Laura Govin. You know, one thing, they haven't been able to get a ball out wide. It's really play anything in. Clemson's done a good job tracking those down and really not letting them get that pass, even the pass before the pass. And now all of a sudden they're able to see those passing lanes. Well, I think some of that is they've been quicker in transition like we talked about. 
Uh, Clemson is throwing more players forward. All of a sudden, when it's three to zero, everyone wants to get on the score sheet, so they're taking chances, bombing forward. That allows your team to get stretched a little bit in those transitional moments, whereas you would have a block of players, six to eight players behind the ball, and now there's only four and five. And they found those gaps. They've exploited those spaces. I mean, really, you would say they've, they've carved out two really nice chances for themselves. No doubt. Handball whistled. Well, Hallie Makowitz is continuing to grow, and this stretch of the season has been good for her. The last three games, she's playing her best soccer of the year. This is the final home match of the year for Clemson in the regular season. Still a chance to host a postseason match here if things go right the next few days. It could get as high as fourth in the standings. If you're fourth, you're hosting a first-round game here in the ACC tournament. And, of course, NCAA tournament, you never know what happens with seeding there. Yeah, and I certainly think this, this will be a team that will be dancing come NCAA tournament time. They've got a couple of marquee results on their resume. The win over West Virginia in particular, the, the win over Notre Dame. The draw with Duke, the draw at South Carolina. That's something that will impress the selection committee. Lyles try to flip behind. Here's arrested McKenna Morris. That's a good ball. Forward, a little bit too aggressive of a line for winner. I thought she was going to play that out wide. Yeah, and again, credit to Villa Brandt, quick off her line. Another nice run for BC and gobbled up by Makowitz. Tigers, as we said, very good at Historic Greeks Field this year. They've only taken one loss here. It was to NC State 2-1. Beat number six Notre Dame like you talked about. Win over Virginia Tech. Got a nil-nil draw against Texas A&M against Duke. So whoever comes in here for postseason play, should that opportunity arise, got an uphill battle on their hands. Again, BC with Lowenberg. That's Dispossessed. Nicely defended from Morris. Yeah, Lowenberg's been a little bit of a handful back there, hasn't she? She's had a good second half. Really had some moments in the first half, too. I like the way Sagala has really pushed the tempo at the front. You could tell young player, freshman, one of several young players for BC still carving out roles and developing. You could tell she's going to be a problem in this league. That'll be a throw in for the Eagles. Here's a look at the goals that we've seen today. Tigers have had all three. Right through the wickets in the 13th minute. It was Malia Morris. And then again in the 25th, off the crossbar, Sammy Meredith rebounds a Renee Lyles miss. Tigers took a two-goal lead into the half. And then here in the 59th, Kevin, goal number three. It was a beauty on the cross. Yeah, Morris whips in a good ball. Takes a deflection, wrong foots the keeper. Sammy Meredith, two of her three goals, and she's looking for a third right here. Can she get one? No. Sent away, but again, keeping the pressure on and a chance at another corner kick for Clemson. That was dangerous for Sammy, who just checked back in. Yeah, she wanted one more touch on it. She wanted one more touch just to, to set up the perfect shot. Just a little heavy on the touch there. Subs there. Lane, uh, Lane St. George, Sammy Meredith for White and Winter. Lohenberg also out, and Smith comes back for Boston College. And that one headed away. I think that was Smekrod on the it was. challenge at the back post. 
Smekrud, another physically imposing player, 5'11". Can add her to the list of players you're looking to find on set pieces. Hirschfeld in. And Dudley in as well. Lyles coming off along with Hoser. Sydney Moore comes out. Defender for Boston College. This will be played in the box by Villebrandt. Student section till still into it late here. Yes. Ball forward. Can they get Hirschfeld an opportunity? Not this time, but they might on a corner kick. Has she applied enough pressure to earn the corner there? Laura Govin checked in for more, by the way. For Boston College, she checks back in. Time for a few more chances to be created here. Our final seven and a half minutes. We're on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Clemson, the final home game of the regular season for the Tigers. Ball in the box. Kicked away. Andy Barth able to get there. Yeah, I think Born Camp won that. She just couldn't knock it down to a teammate. Corner from Smekrid. This is where BC can hurt you in transition. Sagala playing it forward. Look at the speed from Sydney Sagala again. Running away from defenders. Right foot cross, no. And yes. now Clemson, can they look to counter? Here's Lindley. So tough to do when you're on the ball like that, but she just pulled away from that Clemson back line, didn't she? Smekrud looking for Meredith, and again, it'll set up a corner. Tigers trying to get connected. Eight corners on the afternoon for the Tigers. We've reached the six minute mark. Can Clemson get an insurance goal here? Hirschfeld. Back to Lindley. Trying to weave through traffic. She gets through a couple. Right off the face there and a foul. That may have gone face to arm. I think he called a handball there on Smekrud. Another look at scores around the ACC. You see Duke has it well in hand against Louisville, Virginia. Leading NC State. Virginia Tech the lone goal so far in their match with the Orange. North Carolina has it well in hand at Miami and Florida State. That's the big one. And we've circled here, leading at Pittsburgh 1-0 in the second half. And if that score holds up, then Clemson-Pittsburgh again becomes effectively a win and end scenario. There's, I think, a couple of permutations where maybe both teams could get in regardless of result, but ultimately it's going to be framed as win and end. Can Clemson get another shot? They do. It's Smekrid and... It's saved well again by Villebrand. Uh, anything that's high, Villebrand is getting her hands to. It's a good save there. I think it's going to have to be something. You're going to have to go lower. You're going to have to find the far corner in that moment. Smekrod nearly getting one on senior day. Well, Qualk with those ACC results. 
Virginia Tech just a point behind Clemson. They're keeping pace. If that result stands, Emily Bruff is in. Bruff, who oh, tried to get it back to the middle. That was well defended that time, one on one. I think that was Costello again. She has been solid in one on one v one situations. Another look at the standings. You were talking about Virginia Tech right there, nipping at Clemson's heels. Yep, a win today would push them to 13 points and still very much to play for. Clemson needing to win to keep that working margin over Virginia Tech. And it would appear, unless something as yet unseen were to occur here today, that Clemson will get those three valuable points. Good run. And a bit too far for Lindley, who was offside anyway. One more time, you can catch Clemson in Pittsburgh Thursday at 7 o'clock right here on ACC Network Extra. Highly encourage you to tune in. I always say postseason sports begin at the end of the regular season when there are legitimate postseason stakes. So that's going to be the feel up at Pitt on Thursday. Throw in for the Eagles. Magnus Dutter. Looks like Clemson's going to look for one more substitution here, Quok. It'll be Gabby Gambino, freshman from New York, who will come in for Cassidy Lindley, another senior. Transfer from Florida native of Carmel, Indiana. Forward it goes. They find her immediately. Left foot shot and save. But didn't take Gambino any time to make an impact. She said, I've got two minutes and 25 seconds. I'm going to make something happen. That was well done by Dudley to find her. Born camp left it alone. Bruff. Oh, Gambino was making a good run again. A pie. This is Smith in a foot race. Born camp beats her to the punch. This will be a throw in for BC. You know the Eagles would so desperately like to find a goal somewhere here. Take some good vibes into their finale at home against Wake Forest on Thursday night. Well, and they've, they've fought and had real commitment for the whole time. Magnus' daughter sends it in, and Bruff on the move. Smekrud gets it out, and a nice job to send it away. Magnus' daughter ran a long way. Beg your pardon, that's 29 Badger who sent it away. Left center back. Three nil, an emphatic victory today for Clemson. And a good week. You go 1-0-1 in -oh a couple of home matches in this league, going to be feeling pretty good about what you've accomplished. Yeah, sure, going into the week, you've got, you've got Duke and BC, and at the end of the day, you take four points from those teams coming down the stretch. I think that is a pretty good week at the office. And the Tigers wrap up their home season with a three-goal victory here over the Boston College Eagles. An impressive performance here today, Kevin. Well-rounded in all phases. They kept their dominance defensively going from Thursday, and they also were better in the attacking third with three goals finding the back of the net. Here we'll see them one more time. First in the 13th, it's Morris right through the five-hole as she gets a goal. 
And you go to the 25th. I love this one because Lyle's shot was superb. And then who's there for the cleanup? It's Sammy Meredith. Yeah, opportunistic. She pounces on it. Makes no mistake. And speaking of opportunistic, Meredith again in the 59th after this beautiful cross from Morris again. Yeah, she just puts that away. And how fitting is it that she gets a brace on senior day? Just a super effort for Meredith. Two goals. Again, one goal all year coming in. She gets two. And then Malia Morris as well. Any final thoughts today, Kevin, as the Tigers get back over 500 in league play? Well, I think that the game at Pitt is going to be must-see soccer for any Clemson fan. That, uh, that'll have possibly an ACC tournament riding on it. And Clemson appears to be back in good form going here down the stretch. Clemson, their eighth win in 16 matches overall this season. And again, four wins now in league play and a big three points today to get to 14 in the table. Boston College falls to five, eight, and four. I want to thank our crew here at Clemson for making us sound good today. For my broadcast partner, Kevin Kennedy, I'm William Quackenbush saying so long. You can find Boston College against Wake Forest and Clemson-Pittsburgh at 7 o'clock on Thursday right here on ACC Network.